All right, guys, welcome back once more. We are now going to be working on our homework test review 4.2b. Notice on the top, mine says pre AP. Guys, it doesn't matter if you have pre AP classes or regular classes because it is the same exact test review because everyone is taking the test tomorrow. So we gave you all the same review. So let's look at number one the ratio of guinea pigs to hamsters. <clears throat> what came first? Guinea pigs. Goes on top. GP is for guinea pigs. Hamsters came second, it goes on bottom. So I'm just going to label H for hamsters. It says the ratio is for every two guinea pigs, you have five hamsters. If the ratio is the same when they are when they get a new shipment of pets, about how many guinea pigs would you expect if you have 25 hamsters? So this is what we're solving for right there. Scale factor. <clears throat> Excuse me. To get from 5 to 25, you multiply by 5. So 2 times 5 would be 10, you'd expect. 10 guinea pigs. Nice and easy there. Number 2. One of the world's largest stained glass windows is at Kennedy International Airport in New York. It is a rectangle with a height to length. Height came first, it goes on top. Length came second, it goes on bottom. The ratio is the height of 2 to a length of 25. If the window has a height of 24 feet, what is the length? So this is what we're solving for. Again, scale factor. To get from 2 to 24, you multiply by 12. So 25 times 12. Well, guys, think of in terms of money. If you have 12 quarters, we know 4 quarters is a dollar. So how many is 12 quarters? That would be $3. So 25 times 12 would be 300. So this is 300 feet. There's your answer. All right. <clears throat> This next one actually sounds really good. A recipe for dessert requires three cups of strawberries for every one and a half cups of yogurt. So strawberries comes first, it goes on top. Yogurt came second, it goes on bottom. So it says for every three cups <coughs> excuse me, of uh, strawberries, you need one and a half. As you'll see that fraction, I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to change that into a decimal. So one and a half is equivalent to 1.5. At this rate, how much yogurt would you need? So this is what we're solving for. If you have five cups of strawberries. Well, let's see if we can get our scale factor. Well, guys, to go to from three to five, that's not a good scale factor. But there is a good scale factor going from here to here. So I'm going to go from three to one and a half. So I'm going from big to small. When you're going from big to small, you have to divide. And this one is actually just dividing by two. Because one and a half is half of three. <clears throat> so what is half of five dollars? Correct, that would be 2.5. So this would be 2.5 cups of yogurt. There's your answer. All right. A lasagna recipe that serves six people calls for the following ingredients. How much ingredients will you need to make a recipe, an identical recipe, for 72 people? So we're going from 12 people served. Eh, typo. This should actually say 12, not 6. Sorry about that. That should say a 12. So if we have 12 people served... Now we have 72. Let's see if we can get our scale factor. To go from 12 to 72, you multiply by 6. So let's multiply everything here by 6. I'm going to do the ones I can do right away. We know 2 times 6 is 12. 3.5. So 3.5. Seven, seven times two is fourteen, 
plus another 7 would be 21. So 3 and a half times 6 would be 21. 1 times 6 is 6. 1.75 times 6. I could do that one in my head, but I'm just going to show you all on paper. Since we're multiplying by a decimal, move the decimal to the very back like we did in unit 1 of the school year. That was two total movements. 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 7 is 42. Plus 3 is 45. 6 times 1 is 6. Plus 4 is 10. But remember, I have to move the decimal back two places. So you can put 10.5 or 10.50, it's the same exact thing. Guys, I believe you have a, te a test question just like this. You have to fill in the entire chart, I believe. <clears throat> Don't hold me to that, but I think that's what it was. All right, number five. Uh, the table shows the amount of money Rico earned for watching his neighbor's dogs. Graph the table below correctly that represents Rico's earnings. Well, guys, if he doesn't work, he makes no money. If he watches the dog for one day, he makes $14. So, again, watches the dog for one day, makes $14. He watches the dog for two days, he gets $28. Watches the dog for two days, makes $28. Watches the dog for three days, makes $42. So over to 3, up to 42. And if you look here, it makes a nice linear graph. A linear means straight line, and that graph would be proportional. All right, back side. Mark went to Peter Piper Pizza to play video games. He paid $5 for every 24 tokens he bought. So right here, we are comparing money to tokens. It already tells us for five dollars he had 24 tokens. If he spent a total of twenty dollars, how many tokens would he have? So we're solving for the tokens. Let's see if we have anything set up like this. Five over twenty-four. Well, here's a five over twenty-four. But then look at this. The money has to line up. So the 20 has to be right across from the 5. The 20 and the 5 have to be across. It's not. That does not work. <clears throat> so they have theirs set up a little bit differently than we do. Let's see how would they set it up. Well, we could do this. We could do money over money. Is equal to tokens over tokens. It's the same exact thing. So let's see, 5 over 20 would equal 24 tokens under, over a, something we don't know. Let's see, I have a 5 over 20, which I do here. But then it says you only get 24 tokens for $20. That makes no sense. You get 24, 24 tokens for $5. This one doesn't work. Well, let's see here now. Ooh, C looks really, really good. Because notice here, $5, 24 tokens, $20. We're trying to figure out how many tokens there is. That would actually work very, very good. If you look at answer choice D, it says if you spend $20, you get 24 tokens. I would never go there if that's the case. That is terrible. That is the right setup. They just changed the orders all they did. They're just trying to throw us off there. So make sure you line it up. Look how the money lines up. Look at how the tokens line up. And then you have to make sure this lines up. The $5 to 24 tokens. $5 to 24 tokens, the $20 to my unknown, the $20 to my unknown. Look how it lines up. That would be the good answer. All right.
Shania wants to shade some of the squares in the design below. She wants to have a ratio of shaded to unshaded. I'm going to create a one chart. Words, original, new. We're comparing three things. Shaded, unshaded, and total. It tells us the ratio of shaded to unshaded is for every four shaded, you have three unshaded. So how many squares is that just right here in my original information if you add them up? Good, there's seven here. Well, now I need my new information. Let's count how many squares we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen total here. Well, now we can get our scale factor. To go from 7 to 14, you multiply by 2. So times 2 and then times 2. So you should have 8 shaded to 6 unshaded. <clears throat> the question says, how many should she shade? Shade right here. 8. 8 would be your answer. All right, number eight. Jack earned money during the summer by working different jobs. The table below shows his earnings for one week. So let's see if we can figure out the scale factor. Well, I'm going to start with this one. To get from four to 52, you would multiply by 13. Guys, if you don't understand how I got that 13, take the earnings divided by the hours worked. That'll give you the scale factor. Same thing right here, 42 divided by 7, 6. So to go from 7 to 42, you just multiply by 6. How about 138 into 6? <clears throat> okay, so let's go and do the division. 6 can go into 13 two times. 6 can go into 18 three times. So to go from 6 to 138, you multiply by 23. So right here, delivering pizzas, he makes $23 an hour. Walking dogs, he makes $6 an hour. Washing cars, he makes $13 an hour. So how much more per day did Gary earn? Or I'm sorry, how much more per hour, per hour did Gary earn delivering pizzas? than washing cars. So delivering pizzas was $23 minus washing cars is 13. He made $10 more per hour delivering pizzas. That actually sounds like a pretty nice little uh, side job right there. All right, number nine. Tim Duncan scored 84 points in four games. So we're talking about points, <coughs> excuse me, in games. So we have 84 points in four games. We want to know how many points, <coughs> excuse me, in eight games. So scale factor. To get from four to eight, you multiply by two. So 84 times two. That's eight, and that's 16. 168 points. All right, last one. Miss Potts types 84 words in two minutes. How many words did she type per minute? You all know what type of problem this is? This is a unit rate. Remember, a unit rate has a denominator of one. So here we are comparing words to minutes. 84 words in two minutes. We want to know how many words in one minute. Well, to go from 2 to 1, you divide by 2. So what is 84 divided by 2? That would be 42. So that would be 42 words per minute. All right, guys, I can't emphasize enough. Study, especially these uh, homework problems. They're very similar to your test questions. Remember, your test counts as three different test grades because we're covering so much material. All right, guys. Bye.